Saint Augustine commentary on the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 23 and 24, Tractatus 118. The things that were done beside the Lord's cross, when at length he was now crucified, we would take up in dependence on his help in the present discourse. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified him, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. It was done as the Jews wished, not that it was they themselves, but the soldiers who obeyed Pilate, who himself acted as judge, that crucified Jesus. And yet, if we reflect on their wills, their plots, their endeavors, their delivering up, and lastly, on their extorting claimers, it was the Jews, certainly, more than any else, who crucified Jesus. But we must not speak in a mere cursory way of the partition and dividing by lot of his garments. For although all the four evangelists make mention thereof, yet the others do so more briefly than John, and their notice of it it's, is obscure, while his is in the plainest manner possible. For Matthew, for Matthew says, And after they crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots. Matthew chapter 27 verse 35 Mark, And they crucified him, and parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. Mark chapter 15 verse 24 Luke and they parted his raiment and cast lots. Chapter 23 verse 34 But John has told us also how many parts they made of his garments, namely four, that they might take one part apiece, from which it is apparent that there were four soldiers who obeyed the governor's orders in crucifying him, for he plainly says, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified him, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and likewise the court. Where there is understood, they took, so that the meaning is, they took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and they took also his court. And he so spoke that we might see that there was no lot cast on his other garments, but his coat, which they took along with the others. They did not similarly divide, for in regard to it he proceeds to explain, now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. And then telling us why they cast lots on it, he says, they said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be. Hence it is clear that in the case of the other garments, they had equal parts, so that there was no need to cast lots. But that as regards this one, they could not have had a part each without rending it, and thereby possessing themselves only of useless fragments of it, to prevent which they preferred letting it come to one of them by lot. The account given by the evangelist is also in harmony with the testimony of prophecy, which he likewise immediately subjoined, saying that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. For he says not, they cast lots, but they parted. Nor does he say, casting lots, they parted, 
but while making no mention whatever of the lot in regard to the rest of the garments, he afterwards said, and for my vesture, they did cast lots, in reference solely to the court that remained. On which I shall speak as he himself enables me, after I have first refuted the calumny, which may possibly arise, as if the evangelists disagreed with one another by showing that the words have known of the others are inconsistent with the narrative of John. For Matthew, in saying they parted his garments, casting lots, wished it to be understood that in the whole affair of parting the garments, the court was also included on which they cast lots, for in course of parting all the garments, of which it also was one, on it alone they cast lots. To the same purpose also are the words of Luke, parting his garments they cast lots. For in the process of parting they came to the court whereon the lot was cast, that the entire parting of his garments among them might be completed. And what difference is there whether it is said, parting the cast lots, according to Luke, or they parted casting the lot, according to Matthew, unless it be that Luke in saying lots used the plural for the singular number, a form of speech that is not unusual in the Holy Scriptures, although some copies are found to have lot. In Greek, kleron. And not lots, Mark, therefore, is the only one who seems to have introduced any kind of difficulty, for in saying casting the lot upon them, what every man should take, his words seem to imply as if the lot was cast on all the garments and not on the court alone. But here also brevity is the cause of the obscurity, for the words casting the lot upon them are as if it were said casting the lot when they were in the process of division, which was also the case, for the partition of all his garments would not have been complete had it not been declared by lot which of them also should get possession of the court, so as thereby to bring any contention on the part of the dividers to an end, or rather prevent any such from arising. In saying, therefore, what every man should take, so far that has to do with the lot, we must not take it as referring to all the garments that were divided, for the lot was cast who should take the court, whereof, having omitted to describe the particular form, and how, in the equal division that was made of the parts, it remained by itself, in order, without being rent, to be awarded by lot, he therefore made use of the expression, what every man should take. In other words, who it was that should take it, as if the whole were thus expressed, they parted my garments, casting the lot upon them, who should take the court, which had remained over, in addition to their equal shares of the rest. Someone perhaps may inquire what is signified by the division that was made of his garments into so many parts and of the casting of lots for the court. The raiment of the Lord Jesus Christ parted into four, symbolized his quadripartite church, as spread abroad over the whole world, which consists of four quarters, and equally, that is to say, harmoniously, distributed over all these quarters, on which account he elsewhere says that he will send his angels to gather his elect from the four winds. Matthew chapter 24 verse 31 And what is that but from the four quarters of the world, east, west, north and south, 
but the court on which lots were cast signifies the unity of all the parts which is contained in the bond of charity. And when the apostle is about to speak of charity, he says, I show you a more excellent way. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. And in another place, to know also the love of Christ which far excels knowledge. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19.